<laughs> Hi guys, how are you? It's been a week. Usually they have like seven days. This one had seemed like 30. But I'm alive and well and uh, we're ready to play in some paint. At least I am. Kind of. By the skin of my teeth. <laughs> I just, I'm drawing my based coast surface. Tells you how ready I was for today. Not. Um, as, it, as it stands, the uh, pattern packet for today's project actually went live on the site at 1222 or sorry 1221 and uh, Linda Safranco ordered a copy at 1222 <laughs> which cracked me up because Linda I'm pretty sure she must have been sitting there waiting for it um, I am sorry it's been late but it's been a rough week but um, now I'm just trying to get this dry so that we can continue this is a fun piece. I had a great deal of fun painting it. It just took me all week. That's all. But um, it'll be it'll be a, a neat piece to hang in your studio. The uh, pattern has three line drawings in it. Um, one for coffee, one for tea, and then one just with the mug full of paintbrushes and colored pencils. So uh, there's something there for everybody. So if you wanted to change up the lettering, you don't have to worry about trying to manipulate the line drawing any further. That's why I included just one with the teacup and the flowers, etc. Because uh, sometimes we don't necessarily want to do the lettering that is provided with it. So I thought it would be fun just to uh, give you an opportunity to use your own creativity when it came to the actual lettering and whatnot. Um, so this is going to be a, a pr probably a long one. I'm okay with that if you are. This is, uh, it's, I love the colors in this and there's a lot of mixed media stuff in this. So we're going to be using some matte medium and some fluid acrylics and we're going to be using um, stamps and stencils and the fun part is is that you can use whatever you have on hand. You don't necessarily have to have exactly what I used which is what makes this uh, uniquely yours when you're finished with it. So I have my surface base coated and sort of dry, dry enough anyway. I have my cup of tea and uh, I'm looking forward to playing in paint. So like I said, it's been a rough week. I uh, hooked into some kind of a stomach bug earlier in the week and uh, laid me flat. Not a lot of things do, but it did. And, uh, and since then I've been dealing with a series of, I don't know what you'd call them, cluster headaches or whatever. I don't know, but they've just been not fun. And I still have that, but uh, I'm able to function. So it's all good. And I would much rather be sitting here with you than sitting upstairs in front of the television or in front of a computer bemoaning the fact that I have a headache. I don't want to do that. So I would much rather play in some paint and some stamps and stencils and just have a good day. So aside from the fact that it was a rough week, uh, health-wise. Uh, I did have some happy mail this week. I got some uh, some more Christmas cards rolled in. Um, one, one in particular that really struck a chord was from Vicki Asmas. Thank you, Vicki, so much. It was so sweet of you to, to think of us, and I do really appreciate getting the card. Um, I've also had, uh, I'd, I lost count of how many notes and messages and emails and texts I got this week um, of concern and wishing me well and whatnot, and that just... I all the feel goods all the feel goods so I wanted to say thank you for that you guys were really made me feel a whole lot better and I appreciate it we did have some interesting things come in this week um, I wanted to show you something fun I think I've shown you guys this before these are uh, receipt folders from Staples love these they're the perfect size for your Tim Holtz stencils the perfect size so for your minis that also means that they're the perfect fit for these i was so excited about getting these so excited um a number of years ago i worked for a company we did uh, commercial and industrial finishing and that meant everything from movie sets to hotels casinos to god knows what and so we used to do a lot of muraling and things and one of the things that we used to use was a series of stencils uh, from a British manufacturer the, they made the most extraordinary architectural stencils and we used to order them from them well I soon discovered or should say I discovered recently that they are still in business still in operation and now they also make a whole line of uh, craft and scrapbooking and paper crafting products and uh, when I saw that I had to get some 
because they made great stencils, really interesting designs. And so I got a bunch of them. These are the, from the stencil studio. And these ones are their minis series. I love the size of these. They're just a great size. They, they measure eight by three, which is perfect. They fit inside that little pouch, just aces. And uh, all kinds of designs, some fun Christmas designs, more traditional stuff. I love some of these borders and design elements. These are really fun. Um, and the other thing that really impressed me about them was the pricing. The pricing is very reasonable and the quality is exceptional. So um, I did, I brought in a short line. I think I brought in 14 different designs and uh, we're keeping the pricing as low as we possibly can. And um, I'm really excited about them. I've been playing with them a little bit. So uh, I'm really excited about having them so much so that uh, I ended up placing another order for more of minis. <laughs> So uh, in more. the next week or so, we're going to have even more designs, which I was excited about. And I'm now I'm looking at some of the um, some of the larger ones. But uh, I liked the small ones um, for small projects, for RAK, for for card making, for all sorts of things. They're just this great convenient size. They're actually a little thicker than some. Uh, so they're nicely durable too, which really impressed me. So I'm excited about those. So if you get a chance, just have a look on the site and uh, peruse through some of the designs that we have there. And let me know if there's something that you're looking for when it comes to a stencil design. Um, I have a lot of different avenues that I can search for some unique things. And that's what I really want to bring to the site is more uh, selection and more unique ideas so i'm excited about that so the new stencils are in surfaces i should have uh, two big shipments coming in this week everything has been delayed after the holidays for a number of different reasons be it weather uh, whether it's just the backlog from the holidays or not but everything has been delayed but i should have two wonderful um, shipments of surfaces not the least of which is that uh, adorable little mitten surface from uh, for the lollipop lollipop pattern so those should be in this week and uh, the little breadboards will be in this week and the bees will be in this week <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming in it's gonna be like Christmas all over again so um what else did I want to say did you have anything to say no no, no, no yeah you're no. pretty quiet today I'm I didn't sleep well no no <laughs> Well, in case, just to... And you got glitter on my dot socks. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> Everybody needs a little bit of glitter. No, not my dot socks. <laughs> Renee's dot socks were sitting here and I somehow managed to get glitter on them. There's glitter on them. There's glitter on his dot socks. He'll get over it. <laughs> no, I won't. He's been somewhat traumatized, but he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I got the PTSD from glitter. Yep. So we're going to be playing with mixed media today. I love doing mixed media because it's freeing. You don't have to worry about perfectly crisp lines or, uh, you know, perfectly placed shading. None of the real rules of art necessarily apply. Uh, there's an old saying that learn the rules like a pros or, you know, as an amateur so that you can break them when you're a pro. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're going to be playing with some fun mixed media techniques and we're going to start with um, just a bla black base coat. This is the fun part. You that's know, what she was doing before you. Just before the cameras went on, I was blow drying <laughs> my black base coat because I was still fixing things before hand. So I was busy. So if you guys are ready to get started on make art and be happy, so am I. You can see the wood grain. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of cool. There's still a couple of spots here that aren't quite dry. Oh yeah, that's neat. So the supply list for this one is... Um, a little long but quite honestly most of it you've probably already gotten your stash uh, in the pattern although I did use the fluid acrylics for this piece in the pattern I did give you a, uh, a list of colors that you can use instead of or in lieu of if you don't have the fluid acrylics or if you if they're not easily available to you so this is a fun piece 
and it is intended to be just that just some fun you don't need to have a ton of uh, experience to do this one now in the packet I've got as I said three line drawings the first one is the drink tea make art and be happy um, and then I put this one in and this one is drink coffee make art and be happy so that way you, if you're a coffee drinker and not a teetotaler then you've got something as well so in my original piece uh, there's a band on this side and that was me fixing a boo-boo so I had to put it into the pattern because it shows in the image so but at the same time it gives us a chance to play with yet another technique so we're going to get started on this one the drink coffee make art and be happy and, and of course sue potts is already at it again is she <laughs> Yeah, the puppers are celebrating glitter dot socks. So <laughs> Sparkly pupper socks. Thank you, Sue Potts, for the $20. Thank you very much. Renee and I are going shopping on Monday. We're going shopping for pet supplies. Oh, we're doing that this Monday? Yep. Okay. Got to get the GoPro ready. Yep. So we're going to uh, take our stash of cash and go do some shopping for the puppers and then drop it all off at our local shelter so to do this base I mean, you guys have seen me do this a hundred times i'm pretty sure you're probably sick of seeing it but we're going to be using my fugly brush and i'm going to turn it this way so i'm following the grain my fugly brush and some warm white i got a little too much liquid in here so I want this to be a little drier. There we go. And I'm just going in vertical strokes just to create a little visual texture back there. I do this when I'm doing um, that faux barn board finish. I use this quite a lot because I like that texture in the background, that visual texture, that which was part of one of the painting tips that I talked about this week was creating visual texture and it gives it movement gives it some depth gives it some pattern breaks up what is otherwise an uninteresting flat black background and it just creates some little visual interest back there now you can make this as bright as you want. So if you want it whiter, by all means, put another coat on. It's not gonna hurt it. And if you're not fond of all of this texture, just you know, paint it white if you want to. Or black, it doesn't matter. Or if you want, use some paper back there. Use a little bit of um, collage paper, something with a pattern in there if you want. There's a hundred things you can do to make this a bit more interesting. I like the, the variations in this though. I think that's what appeals to me about it. And with the brush, you can see that it's kind of dry and it gives up that dry look, which appeals to me too. Again, it's texture, visual texture. And it makes things interesting. I think I'm happy with that. So once you have that on, I'm going to dry it. I'll speed the process up a little bit with some. Love my little heat gun. And I'm going to tell you guys, um, although uh, for my Canadian friends and neighbors, uh, unfortunately, Decor does not ship to Canada from their website. Um, and it's. I know why it's simply they're trying to navigate some of the trade issues and shipping issues that we have without making it too horrendously expensive so at this point it's difficult but for those of you living in the u.s they do ship all over the continental united states and i do believe they also ship to hawaii but um if you look in the What's that section on my YouTube thing called? 
at the info section where we put all the links and whatnot. The description. The description. Hello. Really? It's in the. It's, it's in the description. Just below the video. Just below the video. In the description. Hello. You'll see. Click. Uh, see more. <laughs> click that. You'll get all the information, all the websites and links, and yeah. promo codes. <laughs> there is a discount code and mm -hmm. a, an affiliate link to Decort um, that offers you a discount if you're shopping through my link. So, um, if you're looking for Decor products, just hit that link. Helps us out. You know, gives us a little cha-ching. Helps us maintain this channel. So, we'd appreciate that. And, uh, nice part is, is it gives you a discount on, on things you'd probably order anyway, so. Okay, so I think I'm dry. So, I, one of the things that I did do in this, um, because someone had made mention that some of these stamps that I've been using, especially those little lettering stamps, they've been having trouble finding. So, uh, I went ahead and I used my stamp to create these little panels on here uh, so that you can just cut them out if you want to. Um, but if you have the stamp set, you can use that when it comes time. Now, the one that I've been using the most often is this one. Um, oh, Betty's, Betty Newhouse. Hi, Betty. Said $10 with a sticker. Awesome. Thank it's, you very much. It's, it's a pair with number one fan on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. So this is the little stamp set that I've been using the most recently. I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, it was inexpensive, surprisingly inexpensive. I think it was in the like the $20 range. It has uh, the lowercase and the uppercase lettering plus the punctuation and all of the numbers, which is a very complete set, which is just fantastic for the, the $20 or so that it cost me. I found this one on Amazon. However, I have been seeing it pop up in uh, paperworld.com. And it's paperworld, where world is spelt W-R-L-D dot com. Um, and they do actually advertise on Facebook quite a, quite a bit. So they've been advertising this set as well. But I do know that some people are really having a tough time finding it. So if you get your hands on one, cherish it because it's a great little kit. Love that one. Um, I'm also using a stays on stamp pad. You can also use black paint and a brayer if you want to. But I decided to go with the stamp pad just for the sake of simplicity. I'm also using my grunge set which uh, if that's this one, the stamp head to step, we have these on the website. So we have the, that and it's got a, my little cancellation stamp. And what else is in that set? Oh yes, and my vintage note stamp. So these are the stamps that I'm using. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. There's also a crackle one. I seem to have misplaced it. Found it. And this one, which is that crackled paint one. I'm really partial to this one. So for this background, the fun part about this is that none of this has to be really perfect. Perfection is to be avoided. So I'm going to stamp a little bit of crackle. I like that. This crackle one is actually really cool. I like this stamp. It's just a little bit of fun. Just adds a little texture back there, a little more pattern. See, I like it. And I think my stays on pads, even though I've re-inked them a couple of times, <laughs> they are wearing out. So I'm going to tuck a little more crackle in in a couple of places. Nothing major. And I think that'll do for that. And then my vintage note, I think this is my favorite stamp. We still have a few of these left on the website. And I do believe we have them on sale too. <laughs> Speaking of sales. So I have a, um, a coupon code on my website. Happy birthday. Because January is my birthday month. And I've had a sale on all of the e-packets and, and pattern packets. 
And I know that it was supposed to end on Wednesday and it is still up because we have been unable to change it back. Uh, there's a little bit of a problem with the server. So uh, we're just going to let it run for the time being. Well, let it run. We don't really have a choice. Can't seem to get rid of it. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get that fixed soon. But in the meantime, it's to your benefit. So that all those sale prices are still in effect because of that. So if you're looking for particular patterns, now would be a really good time to take advantage of that uh, that glitch. And uh, we, all, as I said, we have the coupon code up there. Happy birthday. And then we have all of these, uh, the Grunge sets and the Vintage No Stamps are all on sale too. So um, take a bit advantage if that's what you're looking for. So see, I like this. I like the movement that we get back there. It's not really dark. I think the lights we have on are oh, I'm kind of washing that out. I'm going to get rid of one of these. There we go. So, and I do like this stamp. And I like that I can tuck it wherever I want it. I think I'm good for that. I also like this. This is that scrolly one that's in this set, in the grunge set. I love this one. I just think it's pretty. <laughs> I love that it creates sort of a very delicate little scroll design. Ooh, that's pretty. There we go. And the fun part is you can just tuck that wherever. Little bits here and there. I think I'm good there too. And, oh, I, can't, I have to have my cancellation stamp. I don't know what it is about cancellation stamps, but I just love them. I like big ones. I like the small ones. And then we have that that great little set. Uh, this is a Stampenda set too. See, it's got the little bee. I love these. And I think um, Deb Antonick still has these on her website as well. I'm going to take that off. And I love that this one has all these, these smaller ones and these different ones. These really appeal to me. So you can use a variety of cancellation stamps, cancellation stamps, whatever appeals to you, really. And it can make it as busy as you want. I think that that's part of the fun of doing mixed media is that it's very forgiving. You can't really do anything wrong. And then you can mix and match. There's nothing to say that you can't use whatever you have on hand. So I'm going to, I love this set. This is just such a cute set. And speaking of this set, uh, our giveaways for this week are all about mixed media. So there is a, a surface. There is a stencil from M Square. There is a wonderful little create bag. One of my my favorite 0.38 black gel pens is in there. And um, and a few other goodies. Plus we have this stamp set. This is one from Stampendous. One of my favorites. Um, it's very cute. It's got all the little the little flowers and whatnot, but I love that it has the bumblebee and the butterfly and a little dragonfly but then it has all of these really great cancellation stamps which that really appeals to me so we have that in our giveaway we have three of them this week which i think is rather exciting so i also like using this stamp to do some interesting things along the edges and this is how i like to age the edges of things and you can do this now or you can do it once you have all the color on it really doesn't matter because we're working with transparent layers of color it doesn't really matter so i'm just rubbing my stamp pad all the way around the outside i like that it adds this sort of worn look to the edges 
You could also do that chipped paint technique using the brush rolling the paint along the edges if you like. Gives you a similar effect. This one is just a little bit softer, but I like this as well. Mm -mm -mm. Love it. And it can be as dark or as light as you choose. And you can also reapply it later if you want to really up it a little bit. So I'm going to dry this. I'm trying to see. I'm I'm watching on Facebook. Renee is monitoring the YouTube channel, but he had to step out for a moment. Here we go. So this is just a fun way to create a little bit of visual interest in a background without using a ton of um, design work. It just keeps things a little more interesting. It's got a little more pattern, a little more interest than just a plain white or gray or black background. Now we're going to have to start adding some color to this just to keep things interesting. I am using the Deckwork Media colors. And the ones I've chosen to use are a little bit of Diox Purple, some Primary Magenta, some cobalt teal hue, little bit of green gold, and some diarylide yellow. And one of the things you'll notice, I've stuck kind of with a primary palette. And then two, two secondary colors. So I've got my red, blue, and yellow, and then the two secondary colors, the green and the purple. And that's what we're going to develop our background with. The other color we're going to add to that is a little bit of warm white. So, fugly brush. Oh my goodness, this one's in rough shape. So there, I got a reasonably one. So now you know why I called them a fugly brush. This one is moderately clean. We're going to work with that one. And we're going to need some either water or glaze. So a little bit of blue. Some of that diarylide yellow. I love that yellow. Now, if you're working with Americanas, you don't have the fluid acrylics. A little bit of Bahama blue. Primary red, that's our primary magenta, but a little primary red will do the trick very nicely. And then the yellow, of course, I'm using diarylide. You can use saffron. And then our two secondary colors, which is this um, green gold, you can use margarita. And then a little diox purple. Now, diox you can use the Americana Diox, we'll do the same thing. So we're going to start in the upper right hand corner and we're going to work around clockwise. I'm going to get a fair amount of glaze in my brush. It needs to be wet but not dripping. And I'm going to start with my cobalt teal hue. Love this blue. And we're just going to come to about the halfway mark on your 12 by 12 panel. Just slip slap it on. It looks messy, that's okay. And then we're going to get into a little bit of that diox purple again. I'm gonna slip slap till it comes to about halfway, roughly. Let them overlap just slightly. And then we're going to go to that primary magenta, which is our primary red. And again, just slip slap it in. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. And we're going to do this fairly quickly because we want this paint to stay wet. Just a little longer. So I'm going to come into my Diarylide yellow, which is that saffron, that in your face yellow. I love this yellow. And this is fun. I'm going to let that yellow and that red overlap. See the orange we get? Yummy. Oh, we got a few questions. Okay. 
I'm wondering what the brand name for the stamp set that you're using. It's a stamp pendus. And stamp set, the box. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good question. It doesn't really have a brand name. But it I found if you typed in alphabet stamp set and then 70 pieces, it mm. it tends to show up. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that green gold. Karen is wondering what's the difference between media and Americana paints. Fluid acrylics are, for the most part, transparent. There's only a few colors in the line that are not fully transparent. And they are highly, very highly pigmented in comparison. So I'm going to do this a little, a little quicker because my paint is drying over here. I'm going to bring in a little bit of my cobalt teal. And I have to reapply a little of this. So now comes the fun part. So while this is still damp, I'm going to take my little spray bottle. This is just a little bit of distilled water. And I'm going to mist this. And hopefully it didn't dry too much. I'm just going to spritz a little water on it. And one of the first things you're going to notice is all those little boundaries where it looked a little hard edged are going to start softening. Oh, we got a question about chalky gesso. Okay. I'm having some difficulty tracking down chalky gesso in Canada for a group project. Could I mix up my own as a stand-in using chalk paint and chalk adhesive in black or white gesso? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just make sure that you're working with, with like products just so that you don't have a conflict. But quite honestly, just chalk paint, white chalk paint or black chalk paint will do the job. I have an echo in my microphone apparently. So I spritzed this a little bit of water. And so do you see what's happening? I get the colors running together, which is what I wanted. Now I can leave this laying flat and I'm going to get some, you know, some nice diffused color from this. I'm going to dry it a little bit. I got a lot of water in there. But I like how it sort of softens the boundaries between those colors a little bit so you don't have hard lines anywhere. But when you blow on it with the hairdryer, look what happens. See, you get all kinds of fun things happening. I like this kind of a watercolory effect that this creates and you can move it around I kind of put a little too much water on here but that's okay hopefully that fixed it now don't forget I've got a white border going on here so I'm not really too too concerned Why distilled water? Um, just so that you don't get any funky stuff in your water, especially if it sits for any length of time. It doesn't really matter. You can use tap water if you want to, but if the bottle's going to sit for any length of time, weird things begin to happen. <laughs> did it with the water a little bit now the fun part about this is that I could fix that but I'm not going to um, I can take a little bit of shop towel or paper towel or whatever and soak up some of the excess but then the color comes with it so I don't know I'm uh, I'm not overly unhappy with it to be perfectly honest I like that I can manipulate this color a little bit just with a little spray bottle that I can move it around and that it is just water so I can dry the area if I'm happy with it the way it is. How do you clean your 
I just wipe mine with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol. Mmm, homey kimchi. Yummy. I think that explains why I haven't been sick in a long time. Probably. Although it doesn't explain me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you been eating the radish? Yes. Yeah. I love the radish. I gotta eat the radish. I have not, however, had a cold. <laughs> I think that's the cure to the common cold. I've had COVID and I've had stomach flu, but I have not had a cold. <laughs> kimchi helps with digestion, too. Yes, that it does. There we go. So I was getting a spot there where it was a little too solid, so I just softened it a little bit with a little spritz of water. <laughs> she uh, hasn't had COVID yet. You're lucky. Yes, stay away from it. Avoid it like the plague. Ginger and lemon is good for you? Yes. I've had ginger and lemon almost daily. Lemon ginger is great for an upset stomach too. So ginger ale and, and saltines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my diet this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you get that once a uh, once a year ginger ale with the cranberries. Yeah. Hard to come Oh, but it's tasty. Yep. Okay, I think I'm almost there. Just wait for this to dry. So I wish it wasn't as sweet, though. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I just throw a little carbonated water in. Oh. Okay. I'm just going to get this little section here dry, and we'll start to play a little bit. I love the colors in this. Very primary. That's why I wanted sort of that color wheel effect. A little bit. Just the basics. There we go. Almost there. Good gravy, Marie. I kind of overdid it with the spritzer. <laughs> it's like got water everywhere. We're going to actually use that spritzer again for the next step because I like the kind of drippy paint look. And so I'm going to do that. But I wanted to show you a neat technique. So I'm going to clean out my fugly brush. And I'm going to start with a little bit of that. Um, you can use Bahama Blue. I think I will use Bahama Blue for this. A little bit lighter. So I'm using a little bit of Bahama Blue. I'm going to mix a little bit of glaze with it because I want this to be a little on the runny side. A little thinned, I think is the word. So my brush is quite wet and I'm going to just lightly mist my surface with some water and I'm going to stand my board up and I'm going to let some of that paint run down. And now that I have that on there, I'm going to rinse up my brush again and this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to thin that. Paint should be quite watery. And I'm just rubbing the edge of my surface a little. And I want those paint drops to run down, like so. A little bit of warm white and a little bit of Bahama Blue. And I'm letting it run down. This part's a little on the messy side, but it's fun. 
Uh, yes, Cindy, you can absolutely paint acrylics over this. Oh yeah, we're going to. We're, we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just using my little spritzer just to lightly mist those drips. And it's going to diffuse the edges. Do you see how they soften up? Let it run all the way to the bottom. It's fine. Make a mess. It is going to make a mess. That's okay. Ooh, carrot. <laughs> I like this part. So I can continue to mist so that those colors diffuse and run. I love that you get this type of pattern in here and that the colors kind of blur a little so they don't look so hard edged. And then you can gradually start lowering the angle of the board so that you get less run. Patrick had a... Where's Patrick's question? Where is it? Is it possible to get the same effect with neutral colors in the media line? Um, I love the feeling of old Victorian slash retro slash vintage, vintage products, projects. Blech. Oh yeah, I get where you're going with that. Ideally, what I would do with the media line, because the colors are so vibrant and they're so saturated, ideally what I would do is use those colors and then mute them. And I frequently do that using asphaltum. And you guys know me for that color, I know that. Um, I frequently use asphaltum for that type of thing. But you could use grays. You can use um, Payne's gray. You can mute colors a number of different ways. You can even do it with a little bit of raw umber. So when I put this back down, it stops the paint from running and it also allows the colors to diffuse out a little bit, which I really like that look. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to dry this. My microphone's strange again. Are we sure it's the microphone? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> I like this rund, rund effect, this paint running, you know, drizzly effect. It's quite popular in the art gallery. Mm -hmm. It's all over, like old fine art stuff. Yeah. Seems to be a thing that... Uh, technique used long ago I will I I don't know that it was a technique all that much as uh, you know just happened <laughs> yeah, it you could, know could be water damage it could be water damage but I rather like it I like the uh, the overall effect just creates yet another layer of interest I'm gonna try something So the downside to using that spritzer is it does take a little longer for paint to dry, but I love the effect in the end. I've got one spot here where it got a little oversaturated, but that's okay. I love these layers. I love this kimchi. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's making me hungry. <laughs> We are having um, <laughs> hot chicken sandwiches tonight. Hot chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. delicious. Interestingly enough, I discovered that buying a whole chicken mm -hmm. was more expensive than buying a rotisserie chicken from Costco. Already cooked. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, I ordered two rotisserie chickens <laughs> instead of buying two. And uh, so, I all I did was debone them and deskin them and ready for hot chicken sandwiches tonight. So, almost dry. I just want to make sure uh, the drips are all dry so that I'm not 
taking off all of my hard work when I do this next step. There we go. Hello from Ajax, Ontario. Ajax. I've ridden my motorcycle through there. Mm -hmm. So this is taking a lot longer than I thought. I got very heavy handed with that spritzer. <laughs> surface is very wet. I've got drips down here and I don't want to mess them up because if I do it's not going to look right. So now our next step for this is to do a little bit of stenciling uh, and it's pretty straightforward this part. I have uh, polka dots which and harlequin which are one of my favorites. Um, I also have need of a postage or a postal stencil because I kind of want to put a postal stencil on because it has a you know and I have to reorganize my stencils again because I somehow managed to mess it up. Where's my... I need my postage. There it is. And I've got a really nice uh, piece coming up in the next issue of Pixelated Palette. I'm excited about that. And I've got a great little phone stand coming up on, uh, on Toll Town. Got a fun little postage stamp, or a postage stamp, a uh, phone stand coming up on that one, which I'm excited about too. So you knew it was going to happen. I'm going to use my <laughs> cancellation stamp because I like them. I was going to use gold, which is what I used the last time, but I think, I think I can go deep. I think this time around, I'm going to use a little bit of a schwalten. So, and I'm going to use it sparingly. I don't want this too, too dark. So, a little bit of a schwaltum. Okay, it helps if you actually get paint in the brush. There we go. A little bit of a schwaltum. I didn't want this to be too, too dark because it's going to bury all of that texture underneath, and I don't want to do that. Hopefully so, this fixed it. Are you still having... Yeah, they're still saying I got an echo. Okay. So, a little bit of a schwaltum. Okay, that worked. That did what I wanted it to do. And I think I'm going to put a little bit up here. Over here. Oh, baked potato soup. Oh, yummy. Still an echo. <laughs> it could be the microphone. Unplug it, plug it back in. Usually mm. works for me. So there we are. I always think this is fun that you can just sort of tuck little things in wherever you choose. I think that's enough of that. So we're going to do our next step, which is we're going to layer stencil helmets on here. So I have my Harlequin stencil, which is one of my all time favorites and my polka dot stencil. So I'm going to start with my Harlequin. I'm going to grab a clean stencil brush. And I'm using a little bit of warm white for this. You can use titanium white, warm white, whatever you have on hand. I am not doing a complete stencil I'm just sort of I want this to be kind of broken up so I just sort of throw a little bit in how's this like so again they're incomplete I don't worry too much about making them perfect and again these just 
basically just pull the eye across the surface and that's why I don't worry about them being utterly perfect. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Need a little bit more warm white here. Okay, I don't have an echo anymore. No? Nope. Do you have a microphone? I do. Oh, good. <laughs> I just plugged it directly into the laptop rather than the hub. Oh, okay. Which surprises me that you don't have an echo if that's the issue. Yeah. Don't know. <laughs> don't know what to tell you, pal. So, again, I'm just loosely using some of these this diamond pattern so that it's broken. I don't want it to be perfect. Perfect is boring. Yeah, no. Last time I just added a, a noise suppression filter so that it didn't echo. Yeah. And this time that didn't work. So. So I, I'm going to use warm white again. This time I'm using a 3 8 polka dot. I do love polka dots. And again, I'm going to be a little heavier handed with this, which means that those dots are going to be a little bit more opaque, just a little. But again, I'm just sort of throwing a few here and there. You could do these in a completely different color. You could do them in a schwaltum. You could do them in a dark blue. You could do them however you like. I just kind of like that sort of mod podge of patterns that occurs. And I like the white because it just keeps this whole piece a little on the brighter side. There we go. I'm liking that. I think I'll throw a couple up here. Love it. I'm happy with that. Uh, Sheila says, I have to go back to packing orders, but I will still be watching if you have any questions, etc. For those who ordered, thanks for your patience. Everything will be out the door on Monday. You have anything ordered from Sheila? No, I don't. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. So I'm happy with that. I think it's got lots going on. It's got lots of visual texture back there. It's kind of pretty. So I'm going to take a little piece of painter's tape and I'm going to roughly tape off about two inches from some. That's kind of close. I should measure that. So look at that, two inches. Is it straight? No. <laughs> oh, hey, I got two inches. Shut up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, baby. There we go. So I've got a two inch border on this side of my panel. I'm going to grab a little bit of gesso. I've been using this one. I got this one from uh, Shopper Plus, 123 Inc., the Canadian website. It was under five bucks for this huge jar. And I have to say, I'm rather impressed. It's pretty good gesso. Sometimes you get, you know, that name, <laughs> name brand from somewhere and it just turns out to be a, yeah, no. But this actually covers quite nicely. I just used a wet brush, so I've got lots of streaks, which is what I want. So I've got one coat on. Dries quite nice, I will say that. Now, I didn't want this to have fully opaque coverage back here for a reason, um, because I'm going to be using white gesso to create some texture and I wanted it to stand out, so I, I need a little bit of that background to be showing through. So I'm going to do this one more time. With a little less water this time around. 
There we go. That's what I wanted. Cooking with gas now. Okay. So I can still see, you probably can't on, on camera, but I can still see all of these, um, the, the pattern, the crackle. I can still see a little bit of that yellow green color coming through. Some of the stamps are still showing through a little bit. So I'm going to dry that. What is the brand of the gesso? The gesso is called Phoenix. Um, it's a an inexpensive, like a bargain brand. It's a 500 milligram jar, 16.9 ounces. It's from shopperplus.ca. And this is a medium gesso. It is uh, very nice considering the price. Very, very nice. Oh, is it five bucks? Yeah, I think I got it. It was under under five or under six. I know it didn't cost me more than wow. that. It's a great price. And it is a humongous jar of gesso. <laughs> <laughs> I got two of these because I wanted to try them out. I am I'm not disappointed, believe me. So I have a little bit of media gesso. Now the reason I went to this one is because of how thick it is. This one is like paste. And I have my palette knife. And I, like I said, I wanted this gesso to be a little on the thin side when I put this down because I wanted to see some of that background because the next step is going to be very opaque. So I have, remember my Harlequin stencil? You can do this with whatever you want. If you have a preference, a pattern, a scroll, whatever, you can do it with whatever you want. It doesn't even have to have shown up in the design. It does not matter. So I'm using a little bit of that gesso and I'm just applying a thin layer, no thicker than the stencil over this, like so. Don't worry if they're imperfect, it doesn't matter. Don't worry if they have flaws, doesn't matter. I'm just going to use my palette knife to clean this edge a little bit. And then I'm going to dry that. Nice thing about gesso, it dries quickly. And then I'm going to continue that down the side. I'm just drying it so that the stencil doesn't stick in it when I do the next step. That's all. There we go. And then I'm going to line up my stencil. Again, I'm not really worried if these diamonds are complete because honestly, it doesn't matter. Okay. And I'll do it one more time, finish out that band, and then we can remove the tape. I love doing this kind of thing because it doesn't really matter if you make a mistake, if something doesn't come out perfectly it just becomes part of the piece so if some of those diamonds are incomplete or broken it doesn't matter it just makes the piece a little bit more interesting so I'm going to scrape off the excess back into my pot and I'm going to try to find a spot to put that stencil there we go so I'm going to show you something in reference to your gesso. Of course now I can't get my <laughs> shop towel. Here we go. Okay. So gesso is one of those things that if the jar doesn't seal it will mess up your gesso. So wipe the edge of your jar where it meets the seal just to take off the excess and then put your jar lid back on. And that way you don't have anything blocking the seal from that liner that's in the lid and your gesso will stay a consistent thickness. 
if the air can get in it, it'll dry it out. The gesso will thicken, which I mean, might not be a bad thing, but it does mean that you're going to get inconsistent results. So I'm going to dry this. I love this relief pattern. I like seeing a little bit of texture or raised element on things. I just think it makes things a bit more interesting. And it's fun. I'm set that aside and now we can take off that little bit of painter's tape, maybe. The one thing I have learned, acrylic tips and painter's tape are not your friends. <laughs> this is what they refer to as a uh, almond. Almond nails. They're what I refer to as, be careful if you pick your nose, because they're very sharp. You can skewer your brain with these things. There we go. I hope this fixes it. <laughs> I think it did. So there. I like it. Now, I like the diamond pattern. It, it's one of my favorites, that Harlequin one. Uh, but as I said, if you wanted to change things up and use a different pattern, you certainly could. So this is where you can see why I chose to go with two thin layers of gesso to allow some of that background color to peek through, because I wanted to see the contrast. So otherwise, you would hardly notice this diamond pattern, and I really wanted it to sort of stand out a little bit. So that's why I elected to let some of that base color and some of that base pattern peek through. You could also just do this right over top of the color if you wanted to, and it would not it would be fine. It would still look really great, but I just wanted a change in, in pattern and change in the overall tone, and that's why I went with that base coat of the gesso underneath it just I found it gave this a nice contrast so from here we are ready to start adding our line drawings the one I've chosen to do for today is this one so I'm going to roughly center this in the space where all the color is just roughly so I'm going to go based on the edge of the paper so if I've got about three quarters of an inch all the way around, I think I'll be happy. Just as long as my lettering is reasonably straight, I'll be good. So I'm going to use a little bit of painter's tape and tape this into place. And I think my surface is well dry. So for this one, uh, I've got these cute little dragonflies in this one. I love their dry. I love dragonflies. Like I love bumblebees. You could also put butterflies in here too, if that's your preference. There's certainly nothing to stop you from doing that. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, white graphite for this one. And I'm going to slide my gra white graphite. Make sure you got the shiny side down because when I originally did this piece, I traced the whole thing onto the back of my paper which did not please me much. <laughs> so my paper has decided it wants to curl. So I'm just going to tape this down so it does not shift. And then I'm going to use my red gel pen for this part. This allows me to see where I've been. He's having mic issues today. I do love these little dragonflies. So we have cute little dragonflies. We have a few little daisies. I couldn't resist. I had to have a flower in there somewhere. So I just trace these little guys on. 
This part's going to take us forever, but that's okay. I'll do this fairly as quickly as I can anyway. I'll try some. I think I'm going to go with one dragonfly on mine, and I think I might put a bumblebee up top, but we'll get to that. Cute little dragonflies. This is a fun design. I had fun putting it together. I had intended to do a mixed media floral today, and this is where I ended up. I had drawn it a teacup, and I had flowers in it, and then I kept thinking, I've done flowers in teacups so often, so why don't I put a flower on a teacup, but then what do I put in the teacup? Well, then I thought, paintbrushes, pencils, and then it just sort of went from there. I ended up in a completely different place than where I had originally started out, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So we, we don't need all the details, we just need the general outline of all of these various design elements. So don't worry about the details, all of those little things. And by little things, I mean like the lines in the bristle. Just need the shapes. And as usual, typical of being me, I thought, oh, you know, I'll do something quick and easy for, for Saturday. And instead I came up with something that was easy, but not necessarily quick. So this is where we ended up. What started out to be a small project, something fast and easy, ended up being a 16-page pattern packet. <laughs> so, because that's the way my brain works. <laughs> Nothing like making things easy for yourself, right? No. But I had way too much fun with this. And I, and I can tell I had way too much fun with it because it went from being a simple flower and teacup design to being this. I don't know if Linda Sofranco said it. Mm. She probably did. What? Um, what are the giveaways today? We already talked about that. Did we? Yep. Okay. I don't know where you were. Probably I wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, the giveaways today were the stamp sets. Ah, okay. And we've got a cute little jumbo tag in there. And we have uh, the new Create bags. Nice. Did some nice little Create bags. And some pens, some of my gel pens. And a fabulous B stencil from M Square. A little bit of everything. Yeah, there's a bunch of like mixed. I thought it mixed media. What would be fun to do with mixed media? So, gotta have your stamps, gotta have some stencils, a fun little surface. So, that's our giveaways this week. And daisies, everybody knows that I think daisies are one of my favorite flowers. And they're fast and easy to paint. And they just make things happy. To me, daisies are happy flowers. So a daisy in a studio piece, I think it's a great idea. And... You need to have good paint brushes and a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Speaking of coffee. <laughs> there we go. I just thought this would be a fun one. Now I got way carried away. Because, <laughs> you know, it's me. I get a lot carried away when I'm creating. And I just seem to get entirely carried away with this one. It was so much fun. You know you're having a good time when, I know, I painted it three times. Because <laughs> <laughs> typical, I, um, you know, things change when you're 
when you're designing things. Just because it works on paper doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work when you actually get it onto the surface. And so I, uh, I painted it and then I had to make changes, which I did. And then it meant I had to, when I made those changes, had to alter the line drawings. So <laughs> one thing leads to another. Oh, that was a question I missed, I guess. What's that? Uh, Karen Talbot was wondering if you can add paint to your gesso, and absolutely. Absolutely you can. You can tint your gesso. So if you want to make a different color or a different effect, you can go right ahead. The fun part about this piece is that it is not intended to be, you know, your typical decorative painting piece. It's not intended to be overly realistic. I wanted it to actually to have a kind of a, a cartoon type look to it, which explains the very hard edged um, outlining method that I used. I, I like the end result. It doesn't have that soft refined look that our decorative painting generally has, um, but I'm, I'm very happy with the result that I got. Never mind, Janet Rose answered that question. What's that? The gesso question. Oh, okay. That's Thank cute. you, Janet. <laughs> so, now when it comes to lettering, um, some of you may not want to use this font. You may not want to use this type of, of wording. You may want to eliminate some. That's entirely up to you. You can do whatever you want with your piece. Um, so I in the pattern, I did make a note of which font that I used. So if you want to use that font, but want different words, um, I even put a link in as to where you could find that font if you wish to purchase it. So the, the font is called Breakfast Pastry. Crazy name, but that's what it's called. And it's hollow. It's actually high, a bit more stylized than this. I just went with a solid letter. Pardon me. Does that also include chalk gesso? Can you tint chalk? chalk? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, the one thing you have to keep in mind with the gesso is that it has a very high white pigment added to it. So whatever color you put into it, you're going to get a pastel version. Just keep that in mind. But yes, absolutely. You can tint it with pigment. You can tint it with acrylic paint, with fluid acrylics. As long as you're working with a water-based gesso, you can use water-based paint to tint it. So I'm just quickly tracing on my lettering. And again, I am not worrying too much about whether or not these letters are perfect. And my reasoning behind that is, is that I kind of wanted this to have that simplistic look. So having crisp, absolutely, utterly perfect lettering is sort of counter to that design idea. So I wanted them to be a little less than perfect. That does not mean they don't have to be straight. <laughs> uh, crooked lettering just drives me insane. So if it's going uphill or downhill or, you know, isn't lined up properly, that would drive me up the wall. But irregular edges, imperfect shape, that's fine. It doesn't hurt it. So I'm going to quickly outline this. Now I used a white graphite paper. You don't have to. You can use whatever you want. I used white because uh, oh, it's easy, easier for me to see it against all these colors. Now I have done 101 bumblebees. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I paint a lot of bumblebees. <laughs> she likes bumblebees. I love bumblebees. So I intentionally did not put a step-by-step -step in for the bumblebee, mainly because I've done them so often and they're pretty rudimentary, but the instructions are very clear on how to get there. My question is, how are you going to do the iridescent look on the, uh, the body <laughs> of the dragonfly? <laughs> I'm going to show you a real cute trick. Awesome. Because there's so many products available to you now to add your own touches to things. I'm going to show you a couple when we get to that point. This is a fun piece. And as I said, this one is probably going to run a bit long because there's a lot going on in this one. 
and that's okay. If you wanted to stick it out with me, you're welcome to. Um, but if you have other things to do, you know, children to raise, family to feed, whatever. Um, they can wait. <laughs> they can wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they'll be fine. They'll fend for themselves. You know. um, the video will be available on the YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch it after the fact. <laughs> they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. You know. They'll be feral by the time you get <laughs> <laughs> It's my house. Huh? Go upstairs. It looks like a scene from Mad Max. Yeah, well. That's breakfast around here. <laughs> okay. Don't bother anybody until some... Everybody's had their morning routine done. Yeah. Once everybody's got their routine done, yeah, it's all good. Then you can act like a civilized human. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. This is probably the part about decorative painting and crafting that I dislike the most is transferring a design on because mm -hmm. I am I get frustrated by it I want to paint <laughs> I don't want to sit here and trace things it's like base coating stuff I don't want to do that either <laughs> but it's a necessary evil yes Debbie this is a new pattern it went up at uh, 1221 <laughs> <laughs> roughly 40 minutes before the class started uh, <laughs> it's been a week it's been a week yeah I'm trying so hard to get my, get back to my routine of having my pattern ready a week, you know, on the Monday. And I just, I've been chasing my tail since the new year. So uh, thank you guys for bearing with me. I know it's frustrating, but it's getting back into a normal routine has not been as easy. <laughs> and then getting sick hasn't helped. So... Something about being the CEO, CFO, CSO, HR, <laughs> yeah. customer service. Yeah. I'm kind of wearing all Shipping. of those hats. Shipping department. You know? Shipping and receiving. <laughs> Something about doing it all. Yeah, I've been um, kind of chasing my tail for the last week or so. So, However, I have managed to get all caught up on, on a number of things. So hopefully I... Uh, Hopefully I haven't missed anything here. <laughs> I'm looking. I got all the lettering. But so I'm going to quickly check to make sure that one, I put my graphite paper in the right position, which I did. I know I did because I checked. So yeah. I forgot C E O. No, I didn't. No, that was one of the first ones. It was the first one. C F O, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm still mom. Yeah, I'm still mom. <laughs> I'm still mom. Okay, I think I got everything. I haven't missed anything, don't think. Oh, there's a spot right there that's not clear. Okay. It looks, oh, honestly. A couple little things I missed here and there, but I think, I think I've got it all on there. I know you probably can't see it on the on camera but hello it's there i think yeah <laughs> so i um i really wanted a kind of hard edged almost coloring i guess coloring book comic book comic book type look to this and so this is what i used uh the identa pen you got it I, I, do you know how hard i had to work to do that <laughs> I don't know what it is. I have a brain fart when it comes to this pen. I can never remember what it's called. And I'm it's so proud. I know. <laughs> so I don't know what it is. I have a mental block when it comes to this. So I have to seriously think about saying the words identipen. Yeah. So while I was peeling all of this off in the back of my mind, I'm going, I did pen, I did pen, I did pen, because I can never remember what the freaking thing is called. <laughs> it's a 
pen. It's a pen. <laughs> it's an identi pen. <laughs> this one is is made by Sakura. I love these. And what I like about them is that I can write on acrylic paint with no issues whatsoever, and it doesn't move. It's not bothered by any of the solvents or varnishes or anything like that. So it's this is a really great one for this. And it also makes life a whole lot simpler because we're going to use that identi pen to outline everything again. everything <laughs> like all of the details all the fun stuff so and the fun part is that you don't have to be perfect about it so and we're going to do it again at the end anyway <laughs> or just look at the name on the pen or just look at the name on the pen yes but no i have a total brain fart when it comes to this thing <laughs> so you can go around and trace all of this right away if you want to or you can wait until the end either way it'll work so it gives you a nice hard edged appearance all the way around but we're going to start by base coating a few things and the first thing I want to do is this teacup now I went with black because we had 101 different colors in here and I figured that oh shoot okay my black paint just vomited all over my palette the lid popped off <laughs> and now I have a huge puddle of black paint on my palette so I'm going to start with base coating the teacup with the lamp black, which is a good thing because I have lots of paint, mm -hmm. <laughs> like really a lot of paint. Yes, we were very close to losing our PG rating. Yep. Just at that moment. At that moment. She's allowed one. <laughs> yeah, but but what a one. <laughs> <laughs> She's allowed one curse word, and it can't be within the first 30 seconds. Yeah. No, we will maintain our PG rating. <laughs> and I mean, if you're allowed one, you might as well make it a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mother always used to say that profanity was a sign of... Uh, person with an with no imagination <laughs> I don't know, you, I, don't you know. Could, I can be pretty imaginative when it comes to cursing be very creative with cursing <laughs> <laughs> I'm creative with a lot of things I don't use a profanity very often there's one I'm, word that is so flexible <laughs> yes it is flexible I have to be pretty angry to use that word though Most of the time. Are we talking about the same word? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Starts with an F. Yep, that's okay. the one. <laughs> Frack. Fracking. Yep. Could be a noun, could be a verb, could be an adjective. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Frickety frack. Fudge. Fudge. Flip. Frickin'. That's my favorite. Frickin'. Frickin'. Yeah. I like that one. That one, one works. That one works. Although people laugh at you when you use it a certain way, but because <laughs> it's just like really <laughs> mad enough not to mad enough I want to use it, but not mad enough to use it. Yep. Or in a lot of pain. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I've been known to use that. See, the one time I saw my mother, like, truly, truly, truly angry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, flames in her eyes. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> if you get within my grasp. Was that Walmart? Uh-huh. It's the first time I ever heard her say the C word and mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, that, I don't like that word. You don't like that word, but hey, sometimes it has to be used. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so, but I just, you know, if I'm that angry, I'm beyond <laughs> reason, so. I am very rarely that angry. Very rarely. And if you've made me that angry. Watch out. Yeah. Run. Look out. <laughs> and it's generally somebody, things that make me angry or generally people being inconsiderate or unkind to someone else yeah <laughs> it's very strange not being able to see the pattern oh i, I suppose so right uh, yeah i'm just free ending this sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's not working like that uh -huh. yep Almost there. I think I got. I think I did get it. So I've got one coat of lamp black on here. I think that's going to be enough. <laughs> Just based on that. The F word? Yes. Frickin'. 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 I was raised military and profanity happens. Profanity is a descriptor in the military. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was raised military too, so. <laughs> Husband in the military, son in the military. It Father in the military. Father in the military. <laughs> it's called field mouth. Yep, field mouth. We had a, a rule in our house, though. Yeah. You had a 24 hour. Get it out. <laughs> yep, get it out of your system thing in our house. Field mouth. Okay, so I think I'm good. Just, oh. Excellent. So the worst is over. That to me is the worst, getting in and around all of those little bits. So where's my polka dot stencil? Now, I'm a fan of polka dots. You guys know that. I used the 3 8 because, well, one, I'd already used it elsewhere in here. So I figured since it was already on the table... But if you're not, if you're not particularly fond of the the larger polka dot, feel free to use a different size. Feel free to use any pattern you want to, or not. If you prefer just to have it black, do that. So I'm using a little bit of warm white, and I'm going to put some polka dots I'm not too worried about going over any of the design elements that are on the cup or, oh, crap. Oh, Z word. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> crap, 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 crap. I hit my puddle of black <laughs> paint. The F word was floating. <laughs> it is. Yeah, silly F word. It's one of the many. Many, many, many. F words. Yep. Okay, so I managed to get my stencil brush into that puddle of black paint. Seriously. And so I need to fix a couple of things because now I have gray polka dots as opposed to white polka dots, but that's okay. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> it is just paint. I'm waiting for the day where you start adding F, like curse words to your pattern. <laughs> Just to show that how frustrated you were while you were painting it. <laughs> yeah, that's unlikely. Uh, I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> you take I your, suppose. Take but... your effing black. And... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I think it'd be funny. Uh, no, Just no. one. One no. pattern. Just a small pattern. <laughs> Yeah, no. With a bunch of cursing in it, just to let them know that it, how frustrated you were painting it. <laughs> I'm generally not frustrated painting it because I know I can fix it. But um, from time to time, though, I have moments. <laughs> I have just moments. Sneak it in there just once in a while. I, you see certain things with, like I've seen it 
um, designers where they include in a profanity on it because it's I suppose it's funny to them I, I don't personally right. and in some cases it is funny but I would never wear it I wouldn't hang it in my house or whatever but no 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 no, no, no not like actual you I mean, mean in like, the instructions? In the instructions. Just to let people know how frustrated you were painting it. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm a better communicator than that, I think. You should design that for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be fun. No, it'd be like a nice flower piece, but you'd be frustrated, so you show your frustration <laughs> through the instructions. <laughs> I, I, that's an... Oh, uh, yeah, I had a visual. <laughs> Okay. Not the other way. No. Although I've seen some really funny ones that were designed with profanity in them that I thought were hilarious. Oh, oh the Christmas ornaments? Yeah. <laughs> I just, they were so funny. I would never use one or make one, but I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. But it's I'm a not, gag gift. It's a gag gift, but I'm not a, I, I don't know. I just, profanity to me is... Not necessary. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, sometimes it's absolutely necessary. It's useful, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessary. Profanity is absolutely necessary. In the English language, anyway. <laughs> I suppose. For some. I don't know. I, I, I have a fairly good command of the English language, so I'm pretty sure I can find something that will... Sometimes it's Express required. Express what I need to say. <laughs> it's required. Nothing conveys emotion like an F word. I suppose. For some. <laughs> it can convey excitement. It can convey... <laughs> okay. Happiness. Uh, anger. Oh, yes. Loathing. Uh, loathing. <laughs> Good word. So I have dragonfly wings. And they're reasonably straight. So I've got polka dots on my cup. I've got my tag base coated. <laughs> so what happened at Walmart? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All sorts of things. She's not allowed in Walmart unsupervised. Hey! So... <laughs> That was... That was your father's rule, not the store's. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't implemented by Walmart. It was implemented by the family. <laughs> she is not allowed to go to inside Walmart unsupervised. Costco, she's free. I'm okay in Costco. She's great in Costco. Walmart, not so much. I just do not have any patience for people being unkind or rude to others. And unfortunately, I have a mouth to match. Uh, it seems to have rubbed off on me. Yes, well, more than one person has commented that we are a short-range apple. <laughs> short-range apple. <laughs> I love that one. Short-range apple. I like this part. I like these little dragonflies. The bumblebees are kind of cute too, but the dragonflies are fun. I haven't heard a yes or a no whether people want to see that in a pattern. <laughs> I'm thinking the answer would be no. I think it'd be funny. <laughs> that sounds like something you would send to like Sandy or Deb just to get a rise out of them. Yeah. <laughs> Can I mean, you proofread this. <laughs> <laughs> proofread this. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be worth it as a joke. Now I'm thinking of an expletive alternative adjective to go with flowers. <laughs> Freaking. Freaking flowers. It could go on and on. <laughs> expletive alternative adjectives to go with flowers. Well, not everybody likes to paint flowers. Some people like to paint flowers and just struggle with them. <laughs> <laughs> K 
Could we see the pattern? Uh, do you have a finished one? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That would be helpful. Hello. I don't know why I didn't have it in the first place. Yeah. Hello. So this is where we're going to end up. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one that I'm working on is for coffee. It's the same layout. Just the word changed here. And I added dragonflies instead of bumblebees. That's the only difference. Oh, alliterative. Great word, alliterative. Yeah. So this is what we're doing. So we're going to create this fun little art sign. <laughs> she has a great idea. What's that? So you have a flower like foxglove. Okay. Uh huh. F word. <laughs> F word. Yeah. Yeah. For foxglove. <laughs> Oh, freesia. <laughs> and then... Love it. But done as a pattern. Yep. So you have a big F word in the background and then like a nicely painted foxglove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be cute. <laughs> the implications are hilarious. <laughs> You know, the big B word in the background. And... But what would be funny about that is that how many people would go, oh, pretty flower, and not notice. I <laughs> don't <laughs> you know. Just... It's like that Christmas ornament thing. Yes. You know, the F word is written in this beautiful, elegant script, and people, oh, it's so pretty, but they never realized what they were actually looking at, which I think was hilarious. Well, half of them were millennials and couldn't read cursive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite true. Too funny. Yeah, it was written in cursive so they wouldn't read it. <laughs> you know that it's some a pretty you, ornament. You, I don't know what it says, but <laughs> you know some Gen Xer designed it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of the family's going, "Oh my!" Yep. Assuming that they're. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to work on this little cup down here and this little tag because I just think that's a fun piece. Now, there is on the line drawing a heart, but because we had to base coat this out, I did not put it in because we would be trying to paint around it, and I don't like painting around little piddly stuff. So I'm going to put a quick coat of white on here. I've been having so much fun with these um, these new minis. I'm sorry, I just have this image in my head of one of your uh, black background mm -hmm. paintings. Yeah. With a very faint, like, bronze F word <laughs> in the background uh -huh. and this beautiful flower <laughs> right through the middle of it being in the foreground and everybody going oh that's such a pretty flower and not realizing <laughs> that there's a big f word in the background big f word in the back even funnier is when you see the definition the word with the definition and then there's something baited over it. yeah <laughs> yeah so i can show you a quick way to do a heart and shade it at the same time so I've got this little <laughs> stencil. Stencil. But I really like these. This this is one of those minis. I like this one, but I wanted to use this stencil. So I've got a little bit of that red paint on my palette. I put a little bit of red paint on there. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that diox purple, and I'm just going to put a little bit on one side. My heart is shaded, painted and shaded in one fell swoop. Renee is proving that you have a target audience for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd hang that up on my wall. Yeah, you would. 
I would not. <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious. So to highlight that little heart, I'm just using a little comma stroke on that tag. I just think this is fun. So I'm going to make sure that this is good and dry before I putz with it anymore, because knowing me, I will smear it somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to float around the outside edge. Why do I not have any water in this? There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to float around the outside edge of my tag with a little bit of asphaltum. Love a duck. Love a duck. <laughs> I work at a Catholic parish. So it keeps me. <laughs> wow. Yep. Fudge or freezer. <laughs> freezer. Now, I made a little mistake here. When I dried this, my paint got hot. And so when I went to float over top of it, it instantly dried my paint. And so I ended up with a really dark patch in that one corner. So I'm going to scrub it off and then I'm going to come back in and fix it. There we go. Because I pooched it. Renee, are you saying if you're going to swear, do it in a foreign language rather than English? <laughs> no. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it. <laughs> For the English language to work, you need curses. I suppose. You need curse words. So I'm highlighting this cup with just a little float of warm white. On that left side, just underneath our little dragonfly friend here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside left of the handle right here. It's a weak float and I'm coming in from the edge of the handle just slightly. Just a weak float there, just to mimic this highlight. And then underneath that tag, we need to have a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to put a float right here and again here. And all that's going to do is just lift that tag off the surface a little bit. <laughs> During the great toilet paper shortage? What? Yes. <laughs> 2020? Yep. Yeah. The great toilet paper shortage of 2020. A woman came up and stole paper right out of my cart. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> Those are my poop tickets. <laughs> poop tickets. <laughs> oh my god. So then we need a final highlight, a little bit of warm white on our cup. I'm just using a little stroke of warm white and I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of that handle. And that's just, I'm just using a liner or a rigger to put that little bright highlight in place. Oh, poppycock. So we have dragonflies. I think I'll wait on the dragonflies towards the end. Yeah. We'll do those because I want to do something with some iridescence. So brushes and pencils. Oodles of them in here. I'm going to grab small round. Number four or number six should do the trick. And I don't have one handy. Oh, there we go. So the base color for our brushes for the ferrules, which is the metal portion of the brush. We're using either driftwood or cobbles, cob cobblestone. Cobblestone it is. And the handle of the brush is almondine or light mocha. Of course, I've got light mocha in my hand. I had almondine here a minute ago. Light mocha it is. Can't find my almond deep. There it is. So almond deep. They're so close, quite honestly. Most people would never be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So 
almondine for the handles, cobblestone for the ferrule. I like this cobblestone. It's a little gray beige, a gray taupe. And for the, the hair, you can use a little bit of raw sienna or you can use terracotta or you can use honey brown. So a little bit honey brown for the bristle. Yes, that is 100% true. In the South, you can say about anything and get away with it, as long as you add bless your heart at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that base color for the bristle of this brush is honey brown, or raw sienna if you don't have honey brown. So all of the brushes get that same color. Can I say something? No, I can't say something. I, I figured out what I want to name my Belgian. Do you? Yes. What is it? Snafu. Snafu. Okay. <laughs> Sierra November Alpha Foxtrot Uniform. Uh huh. Snafu. Yep. Situation normal, all frigged up. I think that would be the perfect name for a Belgian Mal. <laughs> Snafu. Yep. Snafu. I saw one the other day named Gator. Se makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was rather funny. <laughs> yeah, Snafu. Uh, I like the name Riot. Yep. I think Riot is a great name for a high energy dog. Or Ruckus. Ruck. Uh, <laughs> I hear Ruckus, and I immediately think like Rufus. I don't know why. Well, the word Ruckus means noise. Yeah. Or trouble. Yeah. I think it's appropriate for a male. So when you're painting this, these bristles in this piece, we're not doing traditional toll. We're not worrying about whether or not we have absolutely perfect edges or perfect base coats. I'm not really concerned about that. And you'll see why in a second. So I've just literally, very loosely, based in this color, I am not putzing too much because there's a second color going into this bristle. And we're going to do that with a little bit of asphaltum. Now, I'm doing it with a dirty brush. So the asphaltum is going to go at the base, and you're just going to pull it from the bottom up. Neatness doesn't count for this, just so you know. Chaos? No, chaos is too... <laughs> Too direct. Yeah. Where uh, the surface for this pattern can be on a canvas, can be on watercolor paper. You could put it on a journal page. Um, I'm working on a twelve by twelve art panel. So I'm just pulling a little asphaltum from the bottom of the the bristle up. Just let it happen doesn't have to be neat doesn't have to be tidy so i'm just starting at the darker color towards the edge of the ferrule and pulling it up towards the top of the bristle like so and again i'm always just following the shape of the bristle they're brushes this one relies almost solely on that hard edged or hard wall design that we're going to finish off at the end. So all we really need is just a little bit of color here and there. We're not too worried about the minutia. We're not too worried about getting those floats absolutely perfect because they don't need to be. So all of the metal ferrules get based this cobblestone. Again, I am not overly worried about getting absolutely perfect base coats because it doesn't matter. Mm. 
I knew a Cain Corso named Ares. Ares is a nice name. Lord of War. My son had a, a Rottweiler named Knox. Oh, that's a good name. That's a strong name. Yep. Knox. Fort Knox. Yeah, strong name. Yep. Oh, jeez, Trace. Little thick, but good dog. <laughs> Rottweilers are wonderful. Rotties are wonderful. The Rottweilers are the epitome of dog loyalty. Yeah. Those dogs will die for their owners. They have no sense of fear, which gets them hurt. They're beautiful dogs. It's the power they have, though. Yeah. They're strong. They're strong. Strong dogs. Do you have your fugly brush on there? Question mark? <laughs> that would be, that's about as close to my fugly brush as we're going to get. But, <laughs> but yes. So as you can see, I am not overly concerned with getting, you know, perfect meticulous. Because we're using a hard wall design for this. And hard wall is just like a, a like coloring books, like comic books. There's a black outline to everything. So it's going to come together rather quickly. So I've got my ferrules in place. I'm just going to quickly overstroke this because it's not quite opaque enough. And again, you can tell I'm not really worried about getting meticulous base coats because I don't... For this particular effect, it's not necessary. So the brush handles and any of the exposed wood. So on the brushes, the handles on the brushes. And I just realized I missed one. <laughs> Diesel. That sounds like a pit bull. That sounds like a Rottweiler. Diesel? Nah. Yeah. I'm thinking like the butterscotch pit bull. Oh, yeah. That'd be a good name for a butterscotch pit bull. Who did I know? I or had a friend that had a dog named Diesel, but I think Diesel was a. I think he was a Malamute. And he it, oh, <laughs> it is a Rottweiler. Uh, right. Diesel is a Rottweiler. Okay. It's a good name for a Rotty, I think. I've had a lot of dogs, but now we have Frenchies. French bull bulldogs, they're so cute. Yeah, they're little bullies. Yes. Well, they are a bully dog. They're a bully, they're a bully breed. breed. <laughs> <laughs> they are a bully breed. Yep. They have attitude galore. Yep. Lots but they're affectionate. They are very affectionate dogs, and they have very big personalities. Like Look at Nicole Wright's little dog, Whiskey. Yeah. He is so freaking funny. That dog has got such a great personality. So I'm using that Almondine. Oh, yeah. Did Janet Mills just say her husband had a stroke on Sunday? No. I hope not. I hope not. There we go. I like mixed media because it's you can sort of relax and just go with what happens a lot of the time. And if it works, it works. And you can add things. There's nothing to stop you from using paper to create some of these elements. So if you wanted to use, instead of painting the teacup and wanted to use you know, some decorative paper or whatever. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. Just cut it out, glue it down. It's all good. Somebody had a pit bull named Butterscotch. Aw, what a great name, Butterscotch. It's too long for recall, but it's called, just call them Butter. Or Butts. Or Butts. <laughs> Patrick's off for the evening. There we go. So 
So I just realized that I missed a spot. I missed the ferrule on one of my brushes. The rigger? Rigger liner. Oops. <laughs> my grand dog is a Frenchie and she's the sweetest little girl ever. <laughs> I just I love their personalities. I'd never own one. <laughs> I just think they're they're cute. They're, they're they're cute. They're fun to visit. I'd never own one. Well, no, because you like working dogs, and you like dogs with. I. I like all dogs. I know. Dogs are awesome. But a Frenchie's not for you. A uh, Frenchie is not for me, just because I know some of the training issues. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you're a trainer. <laughs> I know a lot of the health issues that come with owning a Frenchie. Yeah. And right now they're being overbred. Yeah, there's that. And sadly, the, the Malinois right now is being overbred as well, which is going to cause some problems later on. Yeah. So all of those pencils that are in there, I'm going to put a little coat of um, either warm white or a little bit of gesso onto the skins. Now the skins would be the colored part of the pencil the outside or the the lead portion so i'm just putting a little coat of thinned warm white on there the reason i'm doing that is because the colors that i'm going to use for my pencils um, are a little on the transparent side and they're going to be affected by everything that's on this surface so i want to sort of give them a more uniform surface to start out with so i'm just putting a little bit of warm wipe down if you have gesso on your palette, use that. It'll work. Again, don't worry about getting things absolutely perfect. So if your edges are not exceptionally straight, don't worry about it too much. Do the best you can. This is just the fun part, getting all of these design elements together. Paint is very forgiving. Because if you don't like it, you can paint over it. Love my pet. Her name is Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> we have Gizmo. We have Gizmo. Gizmo, who got his head stuck in a box today. Which says a lot about his personality. <laughs> Did he get it stuck in the coffee box? Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. <laughs> knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I kind of somehow saw that coming. <laughs> Luca and Melina for two pit bulls. Aww. Cute names. Pancreatic cancer. Aww. Aww. Poor puppy. I hate it. I don't makes me sad when I hear puppies are sick. Yeah. I have two Yorkers, Bailey and Zoe. <laughs> awesome. So, I've got a coat of gesso or, or thinned warm white on all of my pencils, plus the lead. Now, the wood portion of the pencil is going to get a coat the same as the brushes. A little bit of that almondine. And because it's fairly opaque... I didn't need to put any warm white under it. Oh, Loki's a good name. For? A dog. Be a good name for a male. Be a great name Sandy, for a male. Sandy Harvey has a Chihuahua, well, Chihuahua Minpin, I guess, named Loki. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and he's freaking amazing. He's a cute little dog. Renee, what do you feed your dog? My dog licks and scratches a lot. Um, she gets a mixture of turkey and rice, and then a product called Fresh Cuts that you can get at PetSmart. Yeah. It's a little on the expensive side, but you mix that up together. And, and she also, it. we also mix some vegetables with some carrots, some celery, and some uh, spinach, yeah. chopped spinach. We mix that in with her rice good. and her turkey. 
But if your dog is licking and scratching a lot, I go to the vet, get an allergy panel done. Find out if she's allergic to grain, because otherwise rice is not going to help. <laughs> yeah. Dot has a very sensitive stomach, so she gets something that absorbs a lot of the acid. She's had a tummy issues since she was a puppy, so. No, not so much. Well. Now it's just. If we don't watch what she eats, she has all sorts of issues, yeah. so. We just maintain. So, I'm almost finished with this base prep here. Get that. And you can tell by the way I've painted this, I have not worried too much about getting absolutely perfect base coats anywhere because quite honestly for this piece it is not all that important. So I'm going to dry that really well so that we can start adding color and we're going to start with I went with more primary colors and a couple of secondary colors for this one. So this one over here if I'm not mistaken, it's purple and I use lavender. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Trying to get it out of the bottle. Miss Lola's favorite treat was green beans. Green beans are awesome for dogs. Like string beans, fresh ones. Great for dogs. Lots of fiber. So this first pencil gets that lavender. Now, a lot of the colors that I used for shading, um, I try to, to duplicate colors. It carries things around the piece. Um, I did add either a little paint spray or Prussian blue because couldn't find a good shading color for a couple of them so I went with that so we got lavender for our purple pencil again just get it covered we don't need it to be utterly perfect so there is our first pencil now for this piece I were, again I was aiming for a very comic book or cartoon type effect for this so that's why I, a lot of these base colors really don't need to be perfect because everything is fairly loose with this. So our next one is our blue pencil. And I'm using a little bit of Bahama blue. You knew that was coming somewhere along the line because I love Bahama blue. There's my Bahama blue. And we got a green. I used a holly green or festive green. Either one will work just fine. And that is our base color for our green pencil. That's that one that's almost straight up in the middle. Now, <laughs> when I painted my original and I put my line drawing on, I realized that I had missed, completely missed, a pencil. And so there is, in my original piece, there is a pencil missing. And that would be this one right here. There we are. So, I had kind of had to wing it a little, so I used a little bit of that diarylide yellow or saffron yellow if you're working with Americana. And I base coated that one with that. It's a very bright yellow. Almost a school bus yellow, just not as opaque. Okay. Uh, 
And then we have a little short one down there. That one is an orange. I used a little bit of warm sunset for this one. Warm sunset is an odd orange, I think. Surprisingly not as bright as you would expect it to be, but very nicely rich. So we have a, a nice little orange pencil in there. And then I uh, duplicated the yellow pencil. You could duplicate whichever pencil you want. I'm just using the yellow because it's there. So there's my yellow pencil. And then we have a red pencil. I used a little bit of primary red, which is the same color that I used everywhere else. So a little bit of primary red for my pencil over here on the edge. It's a nice in your face red. So I'm going to dry these real quick. And then there's a couple of little spots that I think I'm going to touch up a little because I'm not, not happy with them. They're a little rough, so I'm going to clean them up a bit. I've got my little round brush and a little bit of almondine. I just wanted to clean up a couple of spots here because it's just not as opaque as it I would like it to be. It doesn't need to be perfect, but a little too much of the dark color showing through. So there we go. Much better. So this is coming together quite nicely. Now we're going to start by shading all of these pencils and these brushes. And you know me that these brushes and pencils are going to be getting a little bit of a schwalten because that's how I roll. I like my schwalten. So we're going to start with the brushes. And I'm going to separate all of these brushes with a float of schwalten. just to get them nicely separated. And then of course the shadows are all going to the right side of this piece. So shadows on the, the right, all the way up the handle and underneath the ferrule. like so. Again, don't worry too much about these floats. Don't, don't putz with them. Don't make, don't feel you have to make them absolutely perfect because quite honestly, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to, we've got those separated. We're going to move up to the ferrules. Now the ferrules are going to be floated with a little bit of lamp black, but you're going to thin it out quite a bit. We don't want this full strength. And the shadows, again, same thing. So across the seam, don't forget where they join, and then up the right side. There we go. Don't forget to shade those little segments as well, but treat them as individual segments. So a little float there, 
and then up the left for the right. So not a super pretty float, doesn't have to be. We just want to get that shadow in there a little bit. And no, I've repeated this several times that this, we're not looking for those meticulous perfect floats. This is going to have a very hard edged, almost comic book look to it. So don't overthink this. Just relax and have some fun with it. So going to float a little bit of warm white just in from the edge, just slightly. Same thing that I said about each of those segments, treat them individually. So a little float. Might need a little more color in the brush, make that a little brighter. Um, Barbara's wondering if this will be a separate pattern from the tea pattern since this one is coffee. Um, it's not a separate one. The line drawing and the instructions are in the same pattern for both tea and coffee. Boom. My husband calls my studio a crap room. Crap room. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. So again, I'm, these highlights are fairly simple. Don't overthink them. So this one is for coffee because some people prefer coffee. I happen to have a, a, a best friend who is a very, you know, doesn't function without her coffee in the morning. Hi, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> and when I posted the picture yesterday, she said dibs, but she's not a tea drinker. So I had to do one with coffee. <laughs> so, I'm with you on that one, Deb. <laughs> so this one is for Deb because it says coffee, not tea. <laughs> Yeah. Cindy's wondering if there's a reason why you don't float right up to the edge. I, it actually just gives it a little more dimension and implies that it's cylindrical. If I float right up to the edge, it's a little too crisp. I want this to have a bit more of a comic book look. So I always bring the, the highlight in a little bit from the edge. I do that a lot because it implies a bit more height. So, oops, almost forgot. Jeepers. So remember the highlight that we we're just doing <laughs> everything going to do that to the handles. So I'm going to do the same thing to the handle that I did to the rest of the brush. Come in from the edge just slightly. It also changes the light impact point by doing this. So and there we go. So we have that highlight in, so we're going to put a light impact point. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of thin warm white. You can do this with a liner or a rigger. So you're going to come in just from the edge of that highlight and put your stroke in. Deb is the only one that gets dibs on the Saturday paintings. No. <laughs> So I'm just using a stroke of warm white. Of course, I put my finger in it. Seriously, there we go. Oh, from Linda Safranco. Uh, Tracy just got the stencils I ordered. Excellent. The mail person delivered it to the wrong address. Get this, on the other side of town. Okay. The young woman brought them to me. Oh, nice. Awesome. That was sweet. Okay. You got to find them. So we've got the brushes done. I know it doesn't look like much, but it will. I promise. <laughs> so... We do have a little bit of a highlight to put on that bristle. I'm going to do that with a little bit of that almondine, the same color that we used for the handles. I'm going to thin a little of that out and I'm going to use my rigger and I'm just going to pull a few little highlights like this. They can be a little on the dry side, that's okay. They don't need to be perfect.
just a few little strokes. And now we're going to... I just hope it didn't do that to my dibs piece. Oh, you sent one to, to Linda. Yeah, it should be there soon. Yeah. There's three of them gone out. So we're going to start adding color to those pencils. I'm doing the purple one with Diox. This color scares people because it's such a dark, vibrant purple. But that's the float up the back side. A little bit of diox. I love diox purple. Such a great purple. So this is our pencils. The Bahama Blue we're using Prussian blue or Payne's gray, if you don't have Prussian blue. My palette is an absolute mess. <laughs> absolute mess. I love things like this because we can play a little. My brush was an absolute disaster. Okay. <laughs> So a little bit of Payne's Gray or Prussian Blue to shade that Bahama Blue pencil. Little bit. And the green one gets Plantation Pine. This one, as I said, is very forgiving because we're not really worrying too much about perfection for this. A little bit of plantation pine. Now that yellow pencil in the middle, we're going to use a little bit of that warm sunset. And that orange pencil is going to get a little bit of asphaltum as our shading color. And it one's sort of tucked in behind that big brush in the middle there. And then this yellow one over here, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that. That primary red. Oof. Oh my goodness, I had way too much water in my brush. Let's try that again. There we go. There. And then a little bit of that Prussian blue for the red pencil. Again, you don't have to worry too much about getting these absolutely perfect. I can't reiterate that enough. And there's a couple little things here I want to. There we go. So we have to shade the wood portion of these pencils, which is that almondine color. I'm going to do that with a little bit of asphaltum. And it's on that back side. And this is going to make those pencils stand out a little bit more from their background. And 
clean out my brush and then we're going to highlight each of those pencils. I'm going to use a little bit of thin warm white and the same way I did with the brushes I'm going to come in from the edge just a little bit. Okay, I got rinse my brush off again. Cheapers. A little bit of warm weight. And this part is, is loose. It's terrifying when you tell somebody that, you know, it's just loosely painted. We're so used to doing things just so that we forget that we can just sometimes just relax and throw a little color on a canvas. So once you have those floats in place, and they're rudimentary at best, we're not looking for perfection. So I'm going to dry this. And then we're going to add some highlights using that little rigger or a liner. So just come in from the edge of that first float little stroke of warm white. And if you want, let it run out. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to do the same thing to the tips of the pencils, just a little stroke of warm white. Like so. And I noticed there was a couple of things I forgot to highlight, which is on these brushes. There we go. Just a little stroke. Terrifying that we got it done. <laughs> so they need to be very dry at this point because we're going to use our Identa pen. See, got it right again. I make sure everything is good and dry before I tackle this next bit. Did you shade the red pencil with Prussian blue? I did. I use Prussian blue a lot to shade reds. Is there a lot of red in Prussian blue? Nope. No? It's just, it's very transparent. Oh. And so I like that, that sort of blue cast that it gives, a deep purple <laughs> cast that it gives to reds. Same with Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray's got a little red in it, but uh, it's also a really great color for that, for shading reds. Uh, the little short orange did not get a highlight. Yeah, it did. Oh, I missed it. Ooh, eagle eye. Mm. <laughs> so, now you gotta dry it again. Okay, can't find black plum. I what, love black plum. What can you use? Black plum. I didn't use black plum in this one. I know. But... Huh? Okay. Just got some regular brushes from the brush guys, and I love them! Game changer for lettering. Yes, they are. <laughs> I'm loving this so far. So, this is what's fun about this piece, is, and, and this is why I tell you that it doesn't have to be perfect, because you're going to take that Identa pen, and you're going to use it To define all of the shapes that you just painted. And again, I'm using it very hard wall. 
I wanted this piece to have that sort of coloring book or comic book type appearance. And so I'm using my Identa pen to outline and add some of the details, just like you would in a coloring book or a comic book. Now the Identa pen has two points. There's the thick one and then the thin one. I try to use the thin one for detailing all of this because it gets a little heavy handed using the thick. So I use the thick one a little later on. But this also allows you to clean up those rough edges. I love that it gives you that you know, that coloring book or comic book type look. They do not have to be perfectly smooth lines. And this is fun. This is where you get to put in some of those fun little details and things. So if you watch this paintbrush here, I get to put in those fun little odd shapes at the edges. And then you can put your little details in here at the base of the ferrule or at the top of the ferrule just by drawing them in like so. So there's how you get that, you know, that comic book look. I love that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. They don't have to be right on the line. The colors can be a little less than perfect. Same with the pencils, outlining these pencils. Easy peasy. Now, if you're looking for these Identa pens, I know Sandy McTeer stocks them on her website. I don't use them all that often, um, but when they come in handy for certain things, and I know Sandy uses them all the time. So if you're looking for them, go and check out Sandy McTeer Designs because I know she's got them. And if you need any of the stamps or the stencils that I used today, they're on my website. The stamps are on sale. The stencils are at a regular price, but we do have a coupon code for you, and it's at, at the top of the homepage. It's happy birthday, because it's my happy birthday month. So fast and easy way to clean up edges, and it gives us just the look that I was looking for for this piece, which was sort of a hard edged comic book look. Defines everything quite nicely. And it's fun. Sometimes it's just fun to create things, not worry too, too much about whether or not things are perfect, whether or not the floats are right on, whether or not your color choices were, you know, absolutely perfect. I love doing mixed media for that very reason that you can get away with a few things. So I'm just going around checking to see if I missed anything. I think I'm good. So, fun way to do all of that.
no worries, no stress, no nothing. You just fill in the color, float in a couple of highlights, stroke in some light impact points, outline it with an identipen, and you're good to go. We're almost finished with our teacup full of goodies. I'm going to use my liquid gold pencil, which is the or marker, which is this gold paint pen. Um, these ones are from Deco Color. You know me, got to have a little bit of bling in here somewhere. So the edge of my teacup is getting a coat of that gold because I like it. And again, also cleans up a few little whoopsies that I made in the process of painting this piece. Gotta love it when a plan comes together. A little bit of gold on there. I love these. You can get these in sets. They have two gold and one silver on Amazon for the price you pay for one marker in some stores. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to talk about daisies. Because we have three of them on this piece. This was me struggling with the idea of doing a, a mixed media floral and a teacup. I ended up reducing the floral, doing something totally different, and this is where I ended up. And because my brain doesn't shut off when I'm designing, I ended up with three different designs. One for coffee, one for tea, and one just for you know, a journal page or whatever you wanted to do. So, we're going to talk about these daisies. Now, I'm working with warm white, some Joe Sonia's fast dry glaze, and I'm going to use the rigger. I've got a number two. I'm do this with a small round too, but I'm going to stroke in my petals with a single coat of warm white. And I'm stroking them in so that I get lines in my petals so that they're not perfect. I like doing them this way after I've done everything else because they just fill up the space nicely and then the flowers feel more like they're sitting on top of it as opposed to just being painted in place. So just stroking in those petals. If you're handy with a round brush you can do this with a round and just do them as comma strokes. If you enjoy doing stroke work, you can do them that way. So there's my first daisy. And then I'm going to use just some dippy dots. Just pat the centers in with a little bit of warm white. Everybody's quiet all of a sudden. What's the name of the gold marker? It is a Deco Color gold paint pen from Ushida. So we have a daisy back here. Paint around my dragonfly. And I have two daisies at the base of this teacup. Now, these two daisies are tucked in behind the lettering at the bottom. So it's a pain to work around them. But work around them we will. As I said, this one is um, a little longer <laughs> than usual, but that's my fault. I keep getting carried away. And then the centers of these flowers, again, I am just using the rigger to sort of tip tap a little bit of color in, like so. 
These daisies work up very quickly. Because again, we're not worrying too much about the meticulous details. So I'm putting a coat of warm white on the leaves. Like so. Um, I'm working with antique green for these leaves. So they're going to be a little transparent. So I'm going to use a little bit of warm white so that they're not, I'm not working against the colors involved in the uh, background because that can get a little frustrating. So a little bit, a little coat of warm white or gesso will help solve that problem dramatically. So I have that white in place. So I'm going to dry this really quickly. And then um, we're going to finish off these flowers because they work up really fast. This is a really fun way that you can um, customize things. Throw in a few stencils. If, there's, if you're not keen on polka dots, use something else. Use checkerboard. Use little hearts if you want to. Use whatever you have on hand. I'm a firm believer that it's just pattern. You can create whatever you want with it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of... Actually, I'm going to use a little bit of green gold because I have some on my palette. But, uh, a little bit of green gold on here. I used antique green in the pattern. And this one is very straightforward. We're just going to base coat these. A little bit of green. That's why I used the white underneath so that we can see it. And a lot of these leaves are tucked underneath some of this lettering. So we don't really need to um, putz too much with them. So... And I think we're good there. Now the center of those flowers, I'm going to go into that yellow. A little bit of that saffron yellow or that diorillide yellow. Just That's why that white is in there, so that these colors are nice and bright. And they pop off of there really quick. And again, I'm just tapping them in. Super easy. So I'll dry this. So this is where we get to start adding a little bit of color to our flowers and to our dragonflies. Just make sure that this paint is dry. So on our little flowers we're going to use a little bit of Bahama Blue. Trying to pick up color and then promptly made a mess. So a little bit of Bahama Blue right at the base of these flowers where they join the center. It's just a little sea stroke float. Nothing fancy. Just want to get a little color down towards the center of the flower. And this also helps shape those petals a little bit. There we go. Oop. That little bit of blue on these flowers just keeps that the white at the tips nice and bright. There we go. And then while you have that blue on your palette and on your brush, you're going to come out to the tips of these dragonfly wings and put just a little float there. I 
I like a little blue at the tips of these wings. Just a little float and it's short. Doesn't need to be very big. We'll float there. And we're going to do the same thing close to the body. A little short float close to the body. And same here. And it makes the brightness of these wings pop off a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white and I'm going to put just a little highlight on the upper edge of those of those wings. Just a little float, just to brighten them a little. That's all it really does. Just brightens the leading edge of those wings a little bit. Right there. So you have a little bit of that warm white on your brush. I'm going to go to the top of each segment of our dragonfly. So a little float right at the top of that segment there. And all this does is just separates each of those segments of the dragonfly. It's just a tiny little float on each of those segments and it's weak. I have thinned out this paint quite drastically. So there's a float there. And it just defines the shape of these a little more. And gives us the segments. I'm liking our little dragonfly. So we're going to let those little guys dry and we're going to come back down to our flowers. And remember that warm sunset that we used on the pencil? We're going to pull that color into the center of the flowers and just shade the bottom of the center with a little bit of that orangey tone. Now for some lettering. Almost. Yeah, almost. I'm gonna do those leaves yet. Oh yeah. Make sure they're going to dry. I'm going to use a little bit of plantation pine. And we're going to shade underneath our flowers with that plantation pine. And again, these leaves are not going to be overly detailed. A little shadow on the center vein. There we go. And I think I'm happy with that. Oh, yeah, ah. that's what I get for leaving here. Uh, Karen Marburg is now a member. Yay! Right on. Welcome to the cult. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> uh, what color are you doing the leaves? The leaves are a little bit of antique green. And then I shaded them with a little bit of plantation pine. Again, they're fairly rudimentary. They don't, don't spend too much time putzing with them because honestly, it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to take a little bit of asphaltum, very thin. What would you use in place of plantation pine? Um, black green. Black green? Yep. Yeah. A little bit of black green will do the trick. So, I'm just shading my centers a little bit, a little float of asphaltum to give a little dip in the middle. Again, not really worrying too much about it. 
Ashfaltum is kind of my my go-to toning color. I use it for a lot of different things, but mainly I use it for subduing colors a little bit. And so when I want a color to come down a notch, which in this case I wanted it a little softer towards the body, you could use it on your flowers too. A little float of that over top of that blue if you want to. But not necessary, but I like it because it just sort of subdues the color a little bit. So it doesn't look bright blue, it just brings it down a little notch. That's all. It actually gives it a slightly greenish cast, which appeals to me. And this is the fun part about these flowers. Um, I've got my borders in, I've got my tag done, I've got my flowers, they're all painted in, but they're not absolutely perfect. This is where I use this one. I like my little scribbly pen. So I'm going to scribble in some details on my flowers around the center portion and a little detail in the center. I like scribbly details. I do the same thing to my, my petals. If you don't want the ultra fine and you want to go with this, do the same thing with that. <laughs> Identipen. pen. See, my brain shut off. I am a big fan of this sort of rough, hard-edged look. And again, I don't worry about whether or not they're absolutely perfect because honestly, it doesn't matter. And I do the same thing to the outside edges of the leaves. And I do the same thing to the details in the leaves. <laughs> because I want this to have that sort of comic book feel. Uh, believe it's an identi pen. Yep. It is. That's this one's an identi pen. The name of the pen. This one is my point three eight, the black gel pen. I use that one quite a bit for little details, little scribbly lines and things. Now, just because I've done it this way doesn't mean that you have to. This design will work just fine if you meticulously paint every single detail. It will still work. And I just, I like the idea of a very loose and relaxed look for this. And so that's why I chose this. But that doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. Et voila. Now, I'm going to use my little gel pen on my on my dragonflies cuz I kind of like this loose scribbly line on my dragonflies. But that's just me. I like them. <laughs> I do this to my bumblebees too. I use this sort of loose scribbly line. I don't worry about whether or not it's on the edge of what I painted, if it's inside the edge or whether the lines overlap. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to get this loose, delicate look in there. And it helps to find my little dragonflies. And I'm going to do the same thing to the tag. You can use that hard edge line if you want to. I just went with this one. The eight, and it is a gel, Sakura ink. The other one's not a gel, Sakura? It is a Sakura, but it's not a gel. It's a solvent base. Uh -huh. So this one is not bothered by things like varnish, whatnot, but this is. So this one, I spray everything anyway, but this one you must spray before you varnish. This one, you don't have to. So we have our little tag here. I'm going to do the same thing to my tag that I do to my dragonflies. Oh, you answered like three questions in one shot. That's awesome. <laughs> there we go. And I did use my white gel pen in this one. I used it for my the string that holds my 
teacup. And I'll probably use this a little further on because in the original one, remember we did the uh, the edge with the, the stamp pad? I'm going to show you another way to do the edge. But, um, and I'm going to use the gel pen to do it. So I like my white gel pen. And I just saw something I missed. I forgot to put details in my fan brush. The gel pen doesn't show up because it's a much finer line. Yeah, it's extremely fine. See? Very fine. Fun little detail. I love this. So we are down to the lettering. My goodness, we finally got there. So the lettering in this case is coffee, art, and happy. All three of those words should be frequently used in a sentence. Yes, coffee. If not all together. Coffee. Coffee equals happy. Does it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm using my number two rigger to paint in my lettering. A little bit of thinned warm white for this. Again, we are not looking for absolute perfection. Whoa, too much paint. As long as that lettering is straight and level, we do not have to worry about perfection. Straight and level is important because if it's not straight and level, it'll drive you insane. At least it will me. It's like walking into a room and seeing paintings that are not straight. You know, they're all canted onto the wall. I'm in somebody's private home and I have to resist the urge to go and straighten them. But that's just me. It would drive me insane in a gallery to see a painting wonky. Now, if you are so fortunate as to have big jumbo letters in stamps, I would consider even stamping the letters on. Do you need to add some pen work to the bristles on the fan brush? I did, a little bit. But yeah, I could probably add some more if I wanted more texture. So art, and this is happy. Now the fun part about this is they don't even have to be fully opaque. Uh, we're going to use the thick end of the marker the uh, identipen. Had to think about it again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Don't know why that is such a hard one for me to remember. But we're going to use that uh, to add our shadowing on this lettering. You could do it with paint if you want to. You could use a brush to do it if you wanted to. I'm going to use a marker because, again, I kind of want that comic book feel. Uh, she sprays with DecoArt Matte Spray. Yes. Everything gets a coat of DecoArt Matte Spray, even if all I've used is Americana acrylics, simply because I frequently use a variety of things. It is not unusual for me to you know, change midship and decide that I'm going to be using something else, whether it's matte medium or what have you. And just to be on the safe side, I spray everything. <laughs> Is black green transparent? Uh, it's semi-transparent. Yeah, it doesn't show up much when I'm shading with it. Yeah, it's semi-transparent. You have to be a little more aggressive with it. And it is slightly grayed out. 
Um, Plantation Pine, Black Forest Green is another one that works very well for shading greens because it's also a little on the transparent side. So. We're getting there. And again, the name of the font that I used for this is called Breakfast Pastry. I don't know who thinks up some of the names for this, but <laughs> um, it's like paint colors. I, I sometimes wonder who dreams up the names for some of these paint colors, but it works. Did you know there is a green called dill pickle? Uh, no, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> it's an automotive green used by Mercedes. Okay. <laughs> and it's called dill, dill pickle. pickle. Okay. Yeah, I learned that one. I was flipping through an automotive paint book and... Yeah, dill pickle's a For color. For Mercedes, I would never have associated the word dill pickle with a Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it's such a light green yeah. that it's almost white. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. It's like diamond green. Yeah. Um, when my father bought his 67 Mustang in 1967, that's what the original paint color was. Diamond green. Diamond green. Yeah. And it was nearly white. Yeah. Just this slight hint of green. So we have art, we have happy, now we gotta do coffee. <laughs> yeah, and then there was, there was another. Whoa, screen just went black. On Facebook. What? Orchids, yes. <laughs> it, was one, it was one of the first ones we did, actually. Yeah, one of the first ones we did. Who makes the stencil breakfast pastry? It's not a stencil. It's, not it's, a, a, stencil, font. it's a font. Yeah. Yeah. Buffering. Who oh, no. knew? Yeah, that could be a multitude of things. We're still broadcasting, so. No. Hasn't told us that we stopped. Facebook gremlins attacking. Yes. Yeah. But we're almost there. I'm going to do one coat of, of white on this lettering and then just to move this along because I think we're. Facebook might be telling us that we're yeah, we running gotta... a little long. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you, our YouTube limit is in 24 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so, in other words. Hurry up. I got a DD <laughs> now here. Okay. So, I just wanted to, I want to get this base coated. And... Now, I would more than likely... Um, I would assess this once I've got one coat on, but generally I would put perhaps a second coat on. Perhaps. All depends. But I'm almost there. Uh, thanks guys for sticking it out with me. I know this one is long. Um, but I wanted, there's so much fun stuff in this that YouTube is frozen. Well, we are still recording, I hope. <laughs> well, we're recording to YouTube. Okay. Well, I know. Well, Facebook is still running, so it's all good. Yeah, we're, we're still good on, on YouTube. Yeah. 
and uh, we're pretty good for time too i think it's not going to take us that long to finish this out because there's not a lot left to to this uh, but i do want to i'm going to do one word and finish that so that they know what the steps are okay so i have coffee base coated uh, oh my goodness I just put my finger right in the wet paint. That was smart, Trace. Okay. All right. I have coffee. I have art. I have happy. Now, I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to talk about all the fun stuff we can do. So I want to decoupage. You could do this with stamps, um, but... I know that some of you have a hard time getting your hands on the stamps to do this with, so I decided to include the lettering in the pattern so that you could cut it out. So I've already done the line work and everything around it, so we're just going to cut this out. So I just cut close to it, like so. And this is our drink. So much easier when you have this in the pattern because it's frustrating not to be able to necessarily do the things that you want to. Oh, Vicky's got a great question that you can probably answer after you're done. What's that? Uh, packing up brushes for a move. Oh, yes, that's a great question. Uh, towels. Lots and lots of towels. You know, get just paper towels or shop towels, what have you, whatever you have on hand. Lay your brushes flat and roll them up in that and then pack them into a Rubbermaid container. Boom. I made that move with like 400 brushes. But if you roll them up... That's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know. 400 brushes. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Uh, so I'm going to be working with a little bit of matte medium. Love this stuff. It's my favorite sticky stuff. And the only thing you really, I mean, you don't have to put them on straight if you don't want to. Who's to say they had to go on straight? They could go over here like this and overlap the border. They could go like this at an angle. Whichever way you want to do them. The you one do thing, you, boo. You do you, boo-boo. The one thing you're going to do is take a little bit of that. Remember this little spritz bottle? Spritz your paper about both sides. Of course. <laughs> there. <laughs> One thing you were preventing it from doing well, did it, it. And it did it anyway. Well, at least it did it in my hand and not on the surface, because that's what I wanted to avoid. So, oh, bloody, there we go. <laughs> Only 400 brushes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to lay it on and then brush a little matte medium over top of it. The reason I want you to do it with the moist paper is to avoid what I did on the original piece and that is wrinkles and buckles and bubbles and whatnot. It was just very frustrating trying to get them out. So, mist, paper, both sides, medium over top. Best with orchids, I love orchids. Right, I'm trying to find the one. There's French orchids and then there's um, white orchids, I think is the one that they're, you're looking for. I don't think so. For their live cricket phone here. So I'm going to actually clear off my palette because it's got a massive mess. And we'll close up my quite the mess going here. <laughs> <laughs> Video keeps freezing. I it says we have a healthy stream on this end. Yeah. I so I'm going to you can do this one of two ways. You can float the shading from the bottom up or you can float it from the top down 
a little bit of Bahama blue and I think I'm going to do it from the bottom up. So just a little float you're going to and I like the halfway up thing it's just halfway up halfway down <laughs> it's definitely not healthy. <laughs> Our end is healthy. How YouTube and Facebook decide to do their yeah. distribution. distribution. Yeah. It's up to them. Freezing <laughs> wires? Yeah. <laughs> Frozen internet line? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. I'm, I'm amazed at uh, freezing rain since... Yesterday. Yesterday. And, like, the roads are terrible and the sidewalks are lethal. The driveway is like a skating rink. So, there we go. I come up, like I said, about halfway. Oops, that one's a little more than halfway. A little too open. And... <laughs> I think I just saw a little green man running across the lawn. I forgot. Oh, yeah. my goodness with me facebook yeah, it could have been a multitude of things yeah. so this is where that thick end of that um identipen oh my gosh comes into play we're going to add a black line to our letters like this And this just creates a little bit of a lift to this. I just noticed the palette around your neck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had that for a while. I just got this not too long ago, actually, just before Christmas. An uh, artist friend of mine made it. <laughs> and again, this sort of heavy outline falls into that um, sort of the comic book feel. This really appeals to me. And it helps lift the this lettering off of that surface a little bit. And it gives you a chance to fix like any little whoopsies that you may not be entirely happy with. Here we go. Did I spin the wheel? No, I no, didn't. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Not yet. Save it right to the end. Yep. You're out of focus? Uh, no, the cameras are in focus. They've stayed in focus the entire time. That's nice. For once. So there we have... I know, I just think that this is a fun way to do lettering. Shades of the Matrix happening? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have just the edges of this left to do. Now, I showed you how to do it with the, uh, the stamp pad earlier, but let me show you how to do this with a little bit of lamp black. When you're smirking about, you got uh, nine minutes. I have nine minutes. <laughs> I'm almost done. I swear. <laughs> it's not often I go this far over, but it's okay. This is a lot. There's a lot in this one. 
So I'm using a big fat round brush. You guys have seen me do this before. We're gonna do like a chipped paint effect. And I'm just going to roll my brush along the edge of the outside, like so. Sort of a roll and push pull so that I get an irregular edge. And I'm going to stop just before I hit that white band. Just cause. Did you miss a piece of tape on the lower right side? No. Nope. So a little push me pull you. Rolling it. I'm getting a little heavier than I ordinarily would because it's just not showing up very well. There we go. So the like letter lining was with the larger end of the identipen? It was indeed. Yes, ma'am. Nothing fancy. I kept it as simple and as rudimentary as possible. So. A boom. A boom. I've got a chippy paint look all the way around the outside edge. I'll try it real quick. Then we're going to highlight it with a white gel pen. Now, if you wanted to, you could do the same thing along here. Just tape it off and put a rough edge in. But I kind of like that clean border. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to dry this really quick. And then while I'm... Uh, just putting that highlight on. Renee's going to get that wheel ready. So oh, the wheel's ready. I'm just using my little uh, my white gel pen. I'm going to draw along the edge. Come on. Pen's being persnickety. Persnickety. Yeah. I'm going to draw all along that edge with that white gel pen. This is, this piece was just so much fun to design and even more fun to paint. You can do dragonflies, you can do bumblebees. If you want to do butterflies, go ahead. Take out the bugs and put uh, butterflies in if you want to. If you want to get rid of the lettering altogether, leave it out. Just do a fun little sign. When I was doing the step outs for this piece, I just did them on a little panel and uh, I left the lettering out altogether. And I think it looks really cute. Or you could just put the word art on it. There's a hundred ways you could jazz this up and have some fun at the same time. So if you wanted to do the lettering differently, go ahead and do it. You can do whatever you want. It's your piece. <laughs> you do you, boo-boo. You do you. I kind of like this, this chippy edged, chippy paint look too. That's kind of fun. I spattered mine, my original. I don't think it's necessary for this one. They've got so much going on on it with all this white gel paint and the chipped edge and all the drippy paint and whatnot. You could spatter it if you want to, but it's not necessary. I did on the first one. You could do it with white, do it with black, do it with whatever blows your hair back. And there we go. Drink coffee, make art and be happy. Boom. Boom. Okay, switch cameras. <laughs> I had fun with this. It was so much fun. Boom. And as Deb's a coffee drinker, you know. <laughs> There's the wheel. So Ooh, we have a wheel? Not, yeah, with nachos on it. With nachos. Great. Mm, I want nachos. <laughs> Where's my tea? <laughs> so 230 one names nice that's a jam-packed wheel yep and let's and, see who the first winner is oops yep that's and just to um reiterate we have a wonderful little jumbo tag surface you've got a create bag nice little canvas pencil case so you can keep all your creative stuff in one of my black gel pens is in there and uh, we also have a stencil for you, gorgeous B stencil. It's a really nice one from M Square. We have that one in there for you and a great set of Stampenda stamps. And the first one goes to Deb Pels. Yay! Deb Yay! Pels. Awesome sauce. Right. I gotta take her name off. Oh. 
and spin. Goodness. Lots of names on here today. Yeah. Lots of people stuck Cookie it out Cooper. with me for this old one. Pardon me? Cookie Cooper. Cookie, right on. We've had quite a few new new people watching, which I think is great. Yeah. We don't ordinarily run this long. No. <laughs> but there was my problem is is that I was having so much fun with this piece that I got completely carried away. <laughs> and it was fun, but then it took me forever to get anything finished, so I don't even know how to Daryl Furlot. Oh, Heidi for lot. Oh, it's, it's Heidi for lot. It's Heidi for lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome, Heidi. I'm so glad it, she's obviously using her husband's name for her YouTube channel. But yes, I know it's Heidi. So thanks, guys, for sticking it out with me today. This was a lot of fun. I had so much fun doing this piece. And uh, I hope that you get a chance to uh, take a crack at it because I think you'd really enjoy it. There's a lot of technique involved. There's a lot of layering, lots of fun stuff to do. And then I really like that hard-edged look for this type of piece. It works really, really well. So thank you so much for sticking with us today. I know it's been a long one and uh, we are rapidly running out of time. We've hit almost hit our limit. So it is time for us to say goodbye. So uh, we will see you next week. Same time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> we will be you still here. got two minutes. I still get two minutes. Okay. <laughs> so we will be back next Saturday. Uh, for another live class. Lots of fun. I, I'm not entirely sure what we're doing. I have three or four designs lined up. So I, we will have something fun to do, I promise. And what else? In the meantime, if you're in the way of some of the storms down there, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you. I know down south in the southern part of the U.S., the eastern part of uh, the southern U.S., terrible storms. Uh, please try to stay safe and look after yourselves. To friends here in New Brunswick and in Newfoundland, Stay home, grab your storm chips, rest and relax, and stay out of the bad weather, and stay safe. And to everyone else, we love ya. Stay safe. We'll see you next Saturday. Pet your dog. <laughs> Pet your dog.